Are you sick and tired of playing rubbish golf? Maybe your swing is inconsistent. You've got no idea where your golf ball's gonna go. Well, I want you to picture this. I want you to imagine you have built yourself this draw bias golf swing and you can hit shots that are just little tiny draws every single time. Well, you can do that. And this video is gonna take you through a complete blueprint that is going to allow you to hit these beautiful repeatable draws. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So the first thing that we need to start with is the concept. What needs to happen at impact in order to produce that draw shape. And I just wanna keep this as simple as possible. So I have a diagram down here. I'll flash it up on the screen with a picture. We can see this orange alignment stick here is pointing at the target. So it's representing the target line. The golf club is representing where the club face will be pointing at impact. And the red alignment stick is pointing where the path is going. So as we can see, the golf club, which is representing the club face is pointing to the right of target. And then the red alignment stick is even further right of target relative to where the club face is. Now, why is this? Well, if we think about a draw, a draw has to start to the right of target for a right-handed golfer. Otherwise, we're gonna be seeing a ball that either starts at target or left of target and work further away, which is no good to anybody. We're just gonna hit bad shots from there. We're gonna get in trouble. Now, in order to tilt the spin axis to kind of like an aeroplane wing, so imagine my left side dropping down, that's kind of the spin axis. In order to tilt it to the left and get it to come back towards the target, we need to have a path that goes further to the right. Now, in simple terms, let's just say your club face, which is the golf club, is pointing two degrees right to target. You want your path to be twice as much. So you want it to be four degrees right to target. Now, to demonstrate this, let me actually hit a goal shot. I've got the trap man up and let's take a look at some data. So let's take a look at the data. I was hitting a seven iron, I'll flash it up on the screen right now. And we can see exactly what we were talking about. First of all, the face angle, it is positive 2.8 degrees. That means it was pointing 2.8 degrees to the right of target. The club path was positive 5.1 degrees. That means it was nearly twice as much to the right as the face was. So again, that two to one ratio is coming in right there. Now, just to sort of highlight this, the face to path number was minus 2.3. Whenever face to path is minus, that means the face was closed to the path for a right-handed golfer. I can obviously carry distance. 185 is kind of a standard seven iron for me. So now we understand the concepts in place. Now it's time to actually jump into how do we set up in a position that is going to encourage this beautiful draw that starts right at target and draws back for a right-handed golfer. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is just sort of work up the body, give you all the checks, and then from there, you know the A to Z of the setup. So stance width, the first thing that I like to do is I like to have for a seven iron somewhere in this region the edges of the shoulders line up ballpark with the center of the ankles this just matches your stance width to your body position now from there I like to flare the feet out trail foot it, there's a little bit of debate going on there some people like to have it straight other people like to have it flared personally I would say the more flexible you are the more you can keep it straight if you struggle with sort of turning your hips you struggle with rotation the backswing I would flare it out and if you imagine a clock face in front of me you guys are 12 o'clock right there one o'clock with the trail foot lead foot i want it at about 10 30 right there now that's just going to give us a little bit more freedom in terms of our rotation now the next part is really where we start to get the crucial bits the first thing I want you to do is to favor with irons a little bit of pressure on your lead leg. Now you can see as I'm doing this, if I just shuffle my golf club to the side, if I go from 50-50 to 60-40, you can see on my pelvis, is now forwards and middle. So it is closer towards the target or my left hip is closer to my left ankle than my right hip is to my right angle. Now this is really, really important. And the reason for this is because now this sets the foundation for us to be able to have a little bit of this subtle spine tilt away from the target. So you can see in this position, my pelvis is closer to the target. My upper body is leaning slightly away. Now there's a very simple reason why we want to have spine tilt. A lot of people overcomplicate it, but the simple reason is, is if I have my hands together, my shoulders are level. If I drop my right uh, hand down lower than my left, my shoulders tilt. So that is why we need spine angle right there. Now, once you're in this position, you can see my foundations are really, really nice. If I was to draw two lines down from the edges of my shoulders, you can see my pelvis is offset slightly closer towards the lead line and everything is sort of stacked very, very nicely right here. So next we're gonna talk about grip and shaft lean together. And it's really important we understand these two together. 
together. So first off, there is no such thing as a perfect grip. Grip should match what you naturally do in terms of wrist conditions. AKA, if you have this cupped position at the top of your backswing, chances are your face is gonna get more open, so you're gonna want to favor a stronger grip. If you're a golfer who bows it a lot, like a Dustin Johnson or a John Rahm, bows the wrist at the top of the backswing, you're gonna want a neutral to slightly weaker grip. And if you're a golfer who's relatively neutral, well, you kind of can have sort of whatever you like in a sense, you can have a neutral grip or a slightly stronger grip. Now, in terms of producing a club face that is slightly close to the path, I would say leaning towards a stronger grip is always going to be slightly better. Now, here's why I say we can pair it up with shaft lean, because I often see a lot of golfers set up with the shaft very vertical and very neutral, sort of pointing towards the belt buckle, sometimes even back. The more neutral we go, the more we're going to encourage a palmy grip, so a grip that's in the palm, but also a weaker grip. The more we start to add some shaft lean, the more we're going to encourage a neutral to slightly stronger grip. So as a general rule, I would say neutral to slightly stronger grips are going to benefit you in terms of trying to hit a little bit more of a draw. But I would also pair it up with having some shaft lean to where the butt end of the grip points towards the left hip joint for all clubs. Now here's the other thing. Shaft lean, A, helps promoters pointing the face slightly to the right of target, AKA where we want the ball to start so we can draw back and B, it also helps us encourage a little bit more of an into out path. So just by simply having some shaft lean to where the butt end of the grip points at the left hip and a neutral to slightly stronger grip, you are gonna see that suddenly we are going to start to encourage some far better impact conditions. Now let's quickly run through the downline view, just again, giving you these checkpoints. I wanna make sure you know everything when it comes to the setup. Posture wise, I see so many golfers, especially when they struggle with drawing the ball, they get very bent over and they get a lot of arch to their lower back. We call this anterior pelvic tilt, a lot of knee bend, butts very far behind you. The reason why this makes drawing the ball very hard is from here, it's extremely hard to rotate. So as a byproduct, chances are you're gonna stand up and your hands are gonna go very high in the backswing. And from there, it's gonna be very, very hard to get the club shallow onto plane to hit that draw shape. So what I would tell people is favor a little bit of a taller posture. And this is the easiest way to do it is to actually just give you a drill. Now, what I want you to do is grip your golf club normally, or like the way we've just said, stand nice and tall for me, get your weight just a little bit more into the balls of your feet. Easy way to do that is just gently tap your heels. Now, from there, keeping your legs straight, your hips relatively level, they will tilt forwards, but for those golfers who go excessively this way, they will feel a little bit more level than they used to. Just allow yourself just to lower your arms down to you, you feel that nice pressure between your chest and your biceps aka the button of the grips kind of pointing towards your belt buckle then just round forwards and resist the temptation to push your butt back behind you now from there soften your knees so that your knees are right over the uh, ends of your shoelaces and from there you can see this is a really nice posture a little bit taller healthy amount of knee bend but nothing too crazy and from here it's going to be so much easier to rotate. So the final two things that we're going to talk about in the setup are actually going to have the biggest influence in terms of producing this draw bias pattern. Now these two things are alignment and ball position. So let's start with alignment and to kick this off I want to ask a question, write the answer down below in the comments. What do you think controls path more or has more effect on the path? Is it feet alignment or is it shoulder alignment? I'll give you two seconds to answer. The answer is shoulder alignment. Shoulder alignment directly affects the club path, but feet, however, indirectly affect the path. So let me just explain what I mean by that. If my shoulders are pointing to the right, it is going to have a high probability that my path is gonna to go to the right. If my shoulders are pointing left, there is gonna be a high probability my path is gonna to go to the left. Versus, if my feet are closed, so pointing way off to the right and my shoulders are open, where's the path gonna go? It's still gonna follow the shoulders. How does the feet indirectly affect uh, the club path? And it's because if I was to set up here and I was to drop my trail foot back, you can now see that that has actually closed my body off relative to the target. It's got me pointing it more to the right, but it's actually already given me a little bit of backswing hip turn. So now from there, it's essentially giving me an extra five, 10 degrees of hip turn. So now if I turn, chances are my hands are gonna be deeper. I've got a little bit more space on the way down and it's going to be easier for me to promote an in to out path. So if 
if you are a golfer who struggles with backswing rotation, feel free to drop that right foot back, but just know if the shoulders are still out of position, it's not gonna make much difference. Now, when it comes to controlling shoulders, how do we do it? A couple of different methods we have. First of all is the basic one. We can feel like we just point our shoulders just to the right of target for a right-handed golfer. So my left shoulder feels like it's kind of in my periphery here, pointing to the right of that 175 sign. The second way, this is one of my favorite ways, is actually imagining there's a laser coming out of your chest. If your laser points ahead of the ball, my shoulders are gonna be pointing to the left. If my laser points at the ball, they're gonna be pretty neutral. Laser points behind the ball, my shoulders are pointing to the right. Second method that's gonna promote entire puff. The third one is if we bring in the downline view, we can see the right arm have being slightly lower than the left to where you can see the forearm right there, just above my right arm. That is going to produce shoulders that are more to the right, encouraging into our path. If my right arm gets higher than my left, you can see gets my shoulders to the left. It actually gets my tilts in a terrible position as well. Now, final one is ball position. So ball position is kind of, in simple terms, a lot of people think the more we put the ball back, the more to the right we're gonna swing. Yes, that is true, but is it gonna directly benefit our ball striking? Not necessarily. So when we look at the, the ball position, we have to understand that the golf swing is on an arc around our body and that arc is tilted. Now, if we start to move the ball back, yes, we are going to hit the ball earlier on in our arc, and at that moment of contact, the path will be traveling more to the right. However, if we start to go too far back, what then happens is actually, if the lowest point of my swing is roughly around here, and I take it back to this position, you can see that club is too high. So what ends up happening is we throw our angles out. So this is why having the ball maybe half a golf ball to a golf ball back of where you normally place it, so i.e. Most golfers will play with an iron, a standard ball position is about one club head inside the lead heel or somewhere underneath the left ear. If you normally play it around there, which if you're trying to hit a neutral shot, you should be, you would want to move it back about half a golf ball to a golf ball from there. Move that ball back slightly and then close the shoulders. That is going to be more than enough to help us swing into out and produce that solid, solid strike whilst also hitting a draw. So it's kind of a combination of the two. So let's now implement all of those setup adjustments. Let's get the pro tracer on it so you can see this ball flight. Let's see if we can't hit this lovely little draw. Oh, a little slip of the foot there, but you can see that beautiful push draw, started right at target, came back. That's exactly what we're looking for. So there you have it. That is a lot of information in there in terms of the setup. Now, take your time with it. Again, I've timestamped this down below. If you need to come back and check it, come back and check it. But now let's start to talk about the backswing. So now let's move on to the backswing. And again, we're gonna simplify this down and split this up into three categories. And all three of these are very, very important. The first one is depth. The second one is club face and the third one is shaft pitch. So let's run through each of these and give you a drill for each one of these segments as well. So let's start off with depth. What is depth? So at the top of the backswing, depth is where the hands are or as a reference point, the butt end of the grip is relative to the trail foot. So the more the hands are in front of us this way, aka the more the butt end of the grip is over your uh, shoelaces, the less depth you have. The more the butt end of the grip is over your heel line, the more depth you have. As a general rule, to encourage a draw, we would want to see that we have more depth. So, okay, the button to the grip is closer to the heel line. So just to highlight this a little bit more of the importance of depth, let me just show you what no depth looks like at the top and the ball flight it produces. You can see that ball is starting to cut left to right. So little depth is gonna encourage more of an over the top motion. So now if I increase the depth, let's see the difference in ball flight that we get. So you can see, even though I just increased the hand depth slightly, it encouraged just that little bit more of a draw shape to it. But here's the thing, there is a right way and a wrong way to increase your depth. The wrong way is to manually do it by moving your arms and sort of collapsing them behind your body. We never want to increase depth that way. The way that we actually need to do it is by increasing rotation. Now, here's the thing. It is about how you move your body, not how much you move your body. You can see, if I don't turn my body or maybe I laterally slide my pelvis, my hands are gonna wanna go up. But if I just turn, and I'm not gonna go crazy with my hip turn. If I just turn my hips correctly, I'll just go to somewhere around here. You can see how I can easily get my hands in a nice deep position, even with a short back 
backswing. And then from there, I've got loads of space to work the club correctly on the way down. So how is our pelvis supposed to move in order to generate a free and easy hip turn, which gives us shoulder turn, which gives us hand depth? Well, let's just start very, very simple. Grab the club, place it on your shoulders and just turn to your right for a right-handed golfer a couple of times. Now, and just feel how your pelvis is moving. And what you will feel is that your pelvis is sort of rotating around. Now, the reason for this is because it's an oval shape. If you twist an oval, one of the points will actually arc behind you. So if I draw a line down my trail hip here and I turn, you can see by the time I turn to roughly where my top of back swing would be, you can see how I have actually created some space. Now, what I see so many golfers do is they'll sort of stay connected or work through the line that way. That's going to restrict rotation massively. What I want you to do is work through this three-step process. Step number one, stand tall and just turn and you will feel how your trail hip is starting to work. Then from there, stage two is to keep the club on your shoulders and bend forwards into your golf posture. Now, again, I want you to imagine somebody's hand there and I want you to turn that trail hip back and around so you feel like you create a batter golf ball worth of space. You can see how my trail leg has started to lose flex from the downline view. Again, I'm not restricting my lower body movement at all here. I am just allowing it to turn freely. I'm trying to turn that trail hip back and around to create space. Why? Because it has to due to the shape of the pelvis. The final stage is then to bring the club down in front of you and try and recreate those feelings. Again, imagine my hand is on the side of your hip. You are trying to turn your trail hip off my hand back and around to get a nice full hip turn. Now, here's a really simple drill just to help you understand whether you've achieved this good hip turn and also to whether you've achieved enough depth. Now, you're going to take two alignment sticks. First alignment stick is going to go through your belt loops for the purposes of rehearsals. Keep it 50-50. Then from there, set up to the golf ball and place the second alignment stick right on your trail heel just like so now the aim of this is to feel like we can get a good 45 degree turn with our hips or as close to it as possible just aka seeing a nice big hip turn right there as much as you can do and we want to try and get the butt end of the grip at least over that orange alignment stick at the top of the backswing. So I'm here and I'm going to feel like I get that nice turn, 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 turn and I get the butt end of the grip over that alignment stick at the top of backswing there now you can start to see why I say, okay, some players, they might want to drop the trail foot back because it makes rotation a little bit easier in the backswing. You can also see why I tell players, look, if you're very square with this trail foot, that will restrict how much you can turn your hips. By flaring it, it makes hip turn easy. But this is AKA going to get us in a great position to where at the top, the hands are nice and deep. In this position here, they can then start to work correctly on the way down. So that is how we can increase our hand depth at the top of the backswing. It's by increasing our rotation. So now I'm going to push the alignment stick all the way through so my trail arm can pass freely. I'm going to hit a shot. You're going to see how by getting this great rotation, great depth, you're able to increase the chances of you hitting a draw. So I'm going to try and get that nice full turn. Let's see if we can't hit that little bit of a draw shape. There you go. Oh, overdraw that one a little bit. So try to exaggerate for you. You can see overdid it slightly, but it definitely was that right to left movement. Next up, we're talking about club face. I want to try and get your club face square to slightly closed in the backswing. Now I see some, so many golfers, they get in a position to where their club face really fans open. Maybe at the top, the toe of the club is pointing incredibly down to the ground. Lead wrist is very, very cupped. Now, often when they are doing this, it's because they do not understand how to use their wrist correctly in the swing. Now, if I could simplify down wrist set, that would be amazing. And that's what I'm gonna do. So what I want you to do is just drop the club down on the ground for me right here. Point your left thumb straight up as if you're giving someone a thumbs up and then grip it with your right hand. This is assuming you're a right-handed golfer. Flip it around if you're a lefty. Now from here, hold your wrist up like so and just pull your trail wrist back on itself. What do you notice the lead wrist does as I pull my trail wrist back on itself? It flattens and bows off. Now, if I did that with a golf club, if I held it up in front of me and I just pulled my trail wrist back on itself, so I literally am just setting it back on itself, watch what happens to the lead wrist. You see how it flattens off when I do this? This is how we can control club faces by learning that actually setting the club in the back of the trail wrist is the key movement. From the downline view, you can see how that club face is in a very square position. If anything, it's slightly closed. Continue that to the top. I have really loaded this trail wrist. So a lot of the club is just falling into the back of that trail wrist. Now I have an incredible drill that is gonna simplify this down for you. Now I have a table tennis racket here and this is going to give you such good feedback when it comes to controlling the club face. Now, what I want you to do to start with is just to drop the club and grip this table tennis racket as if it is a golf club. Now, 
pick one of the sides, point it towards the target, doesn't matter. Red side for me is pointing towards the target. If I was to do a backswing in the takeaway, I would wanna feel like this red side points slightly down to the ground. And at the top of the backswing, the red side points a little bit more up to the sky. Now, what can you see here with my trail wrist? If I do this again with just my trail wrist, points down to the ground red side, trail wrist is loaded back on itself right there, continue to the top, trail wrist is loaded. Now it's not as if I am fully maxing my wrist set there, it's a very gradual process. I probably feel if this is one out of 10 and that is 10 out of 10, so aka maximizing my wrist set as much as possible is 10 out of 10, I feel like I'm probably at a two or three out of 10 during the takeaway and at the top of the backswing, I'm at a four to six out of 10, something like that. So that gets me in a great position to then get the club working down correctly. Place the table tennis racket on the side of the grip where your right hand would go. Now, obviously this is gonna affect your grip. Don't worry too much about your grip as you're doing this. This is more just to visually show what the club face should be looking like throughout your swing. So again, recreate those same feelings. Right side pointing down to the ground like so, club face is pointing down to the ground top of backswing, get that great depth in there. And now you can see right sides pointing up to the sky right there. So if I drop this down, that's the position. So I've achieved two of the checkpoints, amazing uh, depth to the hands and also club face in a good position. Now I'm setting myself up for an easy effortless downswing, which is not going to have to rely on time. So let's now take all of that and piece it together. So we're taking control of that club face, trying to help us hit that draw shape. Here's what it should look like. And as you can see, that ball is drawing back nicely. Again, that's what happens when we're able to take control of the face. So the final phase of the backswing that we need to work on is shaft pitch. Now, again, by far one of the biggest issues that I see is golfers roll the club to the inside. Now, golf is very much a sport that is about momentum. So if I suddenly have the weight on the stick, so the club head on the stick, rolling behind my hands, the momentum of the club as I start down is gonna wanna pull that club head back over on top of the hands. Now let's think about that. If I'm going under, so under the swing plane to then over, I am not going to be able to hit a draw. I'm gonna be hitting a big old pull, big old slice. So if anything, I need to feel like I get this club head working up into a steeper position Golf is, is a game of opposites, it's a game of momentum. So now the club is gonna wanna drop behind me on the way down. Now that's gonna make it a lot easier to hit the ball from the inside and hit that draw. So just to help you visualize this a little bit better, I'm gonna grab an alignment stick, place it down the side of the grip. And I've also got one on the sort of ball to target line. If I was to set up here, roll it inside, you can see it left arm parallel. This is pointing well outside the ball. Now on the way down, it's going to want to steepen, come back on top of itself, momentum, does the opposite in the downswing, you can now see it's very steep. Now, if I told you, okay, let's flip it on its head, steep on the way back, shallow on the way down, let's see what that looks like. Steep on the way back, alignment stick's pointing inside that orange alignment stick there, shallow on the way down, it's pointing outside. See, the analogy that we're gonna go through is called the steering wheel analogy, and this is gonna help us learn to control the forearms. Now, if you imagine this table tennis racket is a steering wheel, if I am turning the steering wheel for right-handed golfer to the right, where are my thumbs gonna to start to point? They are going to point behind me, AKA I am rolling the club to the inside. Now that is obviously not gonna help us build this draw pattern swing that we're trying to build. So instead of the steering wheel turning to the right on the way back, I want you to flip it on its head. I want you to turn the steering wheel to the left. Now, if I sit up here and I turn that steering wheel to the left, you can see from the downline view how my thumbs are pointing out in front of me. Now, if I was to grab a golf club in a second, you will see that that club is going to be a lot steeper. Then from there, as we start down, we're gonna see the steering wheel turn to the right. So as a very simple analogy, I want you to go right, turn the steering wheel to the left in the backswing, and as you sort of get past left arm parallel, you're gonna to start to turn it back to the right. So if I now replicate those feelings, if I turn the steering wheel to the right in the backswing, it goes inside, it's not what we wanna see. Instead, we wanna get that club working back steeper. So I'm gonna turn that steering wheel to the left, shaft is nice and vertical, from there continues to turn my body, I've got good hip depth, good hand depth, and from there, club face is in a great position, let me give you one simple drill and it's called the finger pointer drill. What I want you to do is grip your club normally, extend your index finger down the shaft like so. Now from there, you're gonna go finger to the sky in the backswing, finger behind you on the way down. If you're somebody who rolls the club inside, you're gonna see fingers gonna point behind you in the backswing and steepen on itself on the way down. So finger to the sky, finger behind you, finger to the sky, finger behind you. You can hit shots doing this and let me show you what that would look like. 
finger to the sky, finger behind you. And you can see it's just a little sort of clippy shot, probably flown about 100 yards. And from there, it's giving me that sensation of a steep to shallow backswing. So there you have it. Those three things are going to place us in a great position at the top of the backswing to where we can work effortlessly into a good downswing position to build us that draw bias pattern. So now it's time to talk about the downswing. Now, in the downswing, we are very much going to follow on from what we've done. We've already set ourselves up in a fantastic position. So a lot of this should happen natural, but we just need to understand what these natural movements are. So the first one is having a weight shift back to the left side. And the second one is getting the club back onto plane whilst being able to control the club face. Now, first of all, weight shift. Very simply, why is it important? The biggest reason is because it helps us shift our low point past the golf ball. What is our low point? Our low point is the lowest part of our swing. Now, if you think of it another way, it's sort of the deepest part of your divot kind of tends to be the low point of your swing. Now, we need it past the golf ball, so somewhere four to six inches past in order to allow us to have a ball and then ground contact. So that is really, really important. Now here's the truth about uh, weight shift. First of all, it technically happens before we finish the backswing. So it will happen roughly somewhere around left arm parallel, we'll start to shift back towards the target. Now, if you think about this like a throwing motion, if I'm stood here and I'm throwing a ball, I'm gonna start to step as my hand is still going back exactly the same motion in the golf swing. So we want to be feeling like as we go to the top, we can start to shift back towards the target and swing all the way through. Now, there are two drills that are going to massively help us when it comes to this weight shift. The first one is the classic step drill. How do we perform the step drill? Well, we're going to set up, I'm going to do it just inside the ball, but set up normally, bring your lead foot so it's in line with the golf ball. As you swing back, as your hands roughly past your hip, you're going to step and then you're going to swing all the way through. So this is encouraging that weight shift by actually physically stepping in the downswing. Now, let me set up to the golf ball and actually give this a go for you here. So I'm going to set up normally. I'm going to bring my left foot so it's in line with the golf ball. As I swing past my waist high, I'm going to step through and hit the shot. Here's what it should look like. Now, the next drill is the basket drill. Now, the reason why I love this drill is because it gives you direct feedback. What do I mean by this? Well, if I set up to the golf ball here and I place this basket about a hand width outside of my left leg, if I was to make a good swing and shift, my leg is going to touch that basket. If I don't shift back and I don't get my weight towards the target, again, that's going to result in my low point being back. I might hit it fat, but also I'm not going to make connection with the basket. So you can see how it gives you direct feedback. So if I do a swing here, I should be able to hit the ball and you should see that that basket might even get knocked over if I do it with enough force. Let me give it a go for you here. Now it's time to make sure that we are getting the club shallowing onto plane correctly. And the first thing we have to do is run through a crucial concept that I see so many golfers get wrong. Now, when you watch your favorite tall pros swing, you will see in the downswing that their hands work on a diagonal, sort of kind of towards the golf ball in a sense, but they work on a diagonal in transition. So what I see a lot of golfers do, and this really, really hurts their game, is they try and copy that motion. How? By just trying to do it with their hands and arms. They go down this way. And now what happens is as soon as they actually go and hit the ball, they swing over the top. You're not going to be able to hit a draw from that position. And the reason for this is because they don't understand the factors are in play. And there are two factors here. Number one, what are the arms doing? Number two, what's the body doing? So if I go to the top of my backswing and I freeze my body, and I was just to show you what my arms would be doing if my body didn't do anything, they would be doing this. And what you can see is they are working straight down towards my trail foot. Now, if I go back to the top and I freeze my arms up here, what would the body be doing? It would start to work like that. Now, as you can see, the hands are pulling the down and the body is controlling the out motion. You blend the two together, this is why you see the diagonal. That is the concept, but I like to tell golfers, look, it's about trying to keep that seesaw in that balance. We don't want either side touching the ground. So if you're a golfer who struggles by swinging over the top, chances are you have too much chest rotation and not enough arm down. So what I need you to feel is that in transition, your chest, stays pointing back towards the camera for as long as possible, or your back stays pointing towards the target for as long as possible, as your hands work straight down towards your trail foot. Now you can see, this is an exaggeration, but you can see how under the plane I am. Now technically under the plane is another way of saying I am promoting 
an in to out path. So obviously our body is always going to turn. We can't just switch it off, that's not gonna happen. But if you're really emphasizing the feeling of keeping the chest back and letting the hands work straight down towards the trail foot, you can see how it's going to be so much easier to approach it from the inside. Now I've got two exercises that we can do to really train this motion. The first one is the split hands pump drill. Now this is um, Pete Cowan's drill, famous, famous golf coach, uh, and Rory McIlroy's go-to drill. So what you're gonna do, grip the club normally with your left hand. Now from there, bring it so it's in line with your toes, and then have your trail hand go on the club like so, so it points away from you, and it's just below the grip. Now I want you to imagine there's a brick wall in front of me right here. My forehead is on that brick wall. I am going to go to the top, and I'm gonna pump it back down to this same position. You can see I've maintained these 90 degree angles. Now, if you're a golfer who struggles to hit a draw, I will bet money that you would be hitting that brick wall on the way down. So you wanna be feeling like you go to the top, pump the arms straight back down to where it feels like they're going towards the right foot and you miss that wall. So it's to the top, down, to the top, down. Now, what you will notice is as you're doing this is you'll feel your arms work very much straight down towards the trail foot. It'll be a completely new sensation. It'll feel like the chest is doing nothing at all. But the fantastic thing is once you've done that a couple of times, you then try and replicate it with a golf club and you go, okay, yeah, I can really feel myself get to the inside and now I can then just turn my body through. Now a second exercise to follow on from what we've done there is to grab an alignment stick. Now once you grab that alignment stick, what I want you to do is set up to the golf ball here and place it so it's roughly kind of the, the point of the alignment stick is about halfway between your toes and the ball line and it's at a slight angle to the inside. Now this is gonna be a great guide. So as you pump down, you feel like the shaft is sort of matching this position. So you go to the top, chest feels like it does nothing. You might shift towards your left leg, but the hands work down towards the trail foot. Now from here, you can see I'm ready to sh uh, swing to the right. So AKA my path is gonna be going to the right and that is gonna promote that great draw shape. So if I hit a little slow shot for you here, you can see that this is gonna really encourage that in to out swing path. Let me give it a go for you here. To the top, down. You would really see me approaching from the inside and then I can just release the club. Now obviously all of that information can be quite hard to digest. So the key thing that we've got to do is give you a simple drill that's just going to allow you to piece all of this together. So one of the drills that I love to give clients is to drop the club down, take your left hand, have it out in front of you like so, and take your right hand and link it under so it's touching, the, the back of your hands are touching right here. Now as you swing to the top, you want to be feeling like you can have that shift and because your right hand is holding the left back, you will feel what it feels like to create some separation between the upper body and the lower body this is going to allow your hands to stay back giving you that position to where you can hit it more from the inside so once you've then done that a couple of times and you can start to get that sensation of the club working down on plane into the slot properly grab the club and repeat those same feelings you can see as i do that that gets me into a great delivery position to then where i'm ready just to rotate through the shot so once you've done that drill a couple of times and you've got the sensation of that good downswing sequencing you'll feel the club working more from the inside. Now it's time to hit a golf shot. So here's what it should look like. In order to hit that beautiful draw shape. Now I know I gave you the table tennis drill earlier to help you with the backswing where we put it on the side of the grip club face good position, club face good position, but this can also complement what we've just done. If I now come down to this delivery position here and I have the bat either pretty much on the side of the grip or pointing slightly down, that is going to promote this good sort of just inside path, nice release, club face slightly closed to the path but open to the target, ultimately producing that beautiful draw shape. So just do a couple of rehearsals even with the table tennis bat on the side. Good top of backswing, down into this good position. I've shifted my weight, club's in a good spot here. Then you can just start to turn through. So now what we're gonna do is now we're gonna talk a little bit about impact, release, and the follow through, and just bring all of those things together. So by this point, we are at shaft parallel in the downswing. We are ready to hit the golf ball, get into that great impact position and release the club. Now here's the thing, if you've done everything right to this point, your path is already gonna be going in to out. So we need to just now make sure that we can control the club face. So this is where we need to talk about release patterns, how you know if you're more of a body release or a roll release, and how to sort of train both of them. 
but it's very, very simple. Club face determines your release pattern. So if you are a golfer who maybe has a little bit of a slower club head speed and you tend to find golfers who have a slower club head speed have more of a toe up delivery position here, you are going to find that you need to have more forearm rotation and less body rotation to square the face up. Reason being is the more your body turns, the more you're going to want to deliver shaft lean. However, shaft lean is technically an opener of the club face. So if you are in a position here where in this delivery position, your toe is pointing up to the sky, if I shuffle inwards, you're gonna feel like you have a little bit less body rotation than some other people, but you're gonna feel your forearms really pass over. So if you toe up here, you are going to be toe up on the way through. So you're gonna sort of match it both sides. Now, what if you're a golfer who is looking at this sharp parallel position, you see your club face is down to the ground, very much like myself. Well, I call these body releases or underhand throw releases. So I'm in this position here. If I was to do a forearm release, I'd close the face way too much. I would end up hooking the ball, starting it way too far to the left. So instead, this golfer squares the face up by turning the body more, You'll often find they deliver a little bit more shaft lean. Uh, and then from there, their right hand will sort of stay underneath the club. So you can see here, my palm is pointing more to the sky right here. So again, if they are sort of slightly toe down here, you will see. So if, if you imagine it's sort of matching my spine angle here, it'll be matching my spine angle on the way through. So it'll be leaning slightly to the right on the way through. So the key thing is understanding your release pattern relative to your club face. Now, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite ways of training this is with the table tennis bat. So now I've got the table tennis bat. Let me show you why this is amazing. Again, this is sort of your club face right here. It's just so close to your hand. So it's really, really easy to visualize. So if you are a golfer who is toe up here, I can see this table tennis racket is also kind of, if you imagine that's the toe, it's kind of toe up as well. So in this position, I want to feel like as I come into impact, I square the face up. So again, table tennis racket is pointing pretty much bang down to the target or the toe is sort of pointing up to the sky and then continue rolling it. So again, toe is pointing up to the sky. So you can see it's sort of on the side of the grip, flush square on the side of the grip like so. Now, if you're more of a body release, you're gonna see that as you get into this delivery position, face is pointing more down, you're turning, 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 a load of shaft lean there because that's gonna be more of your matchup. And then as you come through, you're gonna see that that table tennis is actually pointing slightly to the sky. So if you're roll release, it's side, square, side. If you're a body release, you're slightly down to the ground, square, slightly to the sky. So you can see you are still releasing the club. One is just doing it more with their body rotation, which is the uh, kind of uh, club face pointing more down to the ground. And one is doing it more with the forearms. Is one better than the other? Not necessarily, both have their pros and cons. You might argue that a roll release is gonna give you more speed and a body release will give you more compression. But at the end of the day, your, your release pattern has to match the club face. Now, a question I got asked in another video is, well, can I just blend the two together? Well, in that situation, it's either black or white. You're either gonna be toe up or face down. So no, you can't blend the two together. You're either more of a body release player or you're more of a roll release player. Now, the final, final segment to this, I know there's been a lot in this, but the final segment is a great guide you can use on camera to see where your exit is with the shaft. Now, what I mean by that is as I come through, look at where the shaft's exiting. If it exits more sort of towards the top part of my shoulder here or anywhere around my shoulder, you are going to find that your path is going to be a lot more in to out. So I often encourage golfers to have that high follow through position, especially if they're trying to hit a draw. Think about it like a, like a Roger Federer tennis player. He's going to have that high follow through position. Elbow is going to be pointing up to the sky that way. Again, you are going to see with a lot of golfers who hit a draw, their follow through is going to be a lot higher. Golfers who hit a fade, their exit's gonna be a lot lower. So when you look at your swing on film from the down the line view, have a look at where that club's exiting. If it's from your left armpit or above, chances are that's in a good position for a slight in to out path. If it's below the left armpit, chances are it's gonna be more out to in. If it's on the left armpit, it's gonna be neutral. So we're looking to see it above the left armpit just slightly. So if I blend all of these factors together, everything that we've gone through today, let's see if I can finish up with that shot like I started at the start of the lesson with. Now, if you need more one-to-one -one help with your game, maybe there's a section in this video that you're not quite resonating with or you're struggling with a bit more, um, then 
get in touch with me. Uh, I do all my online coaching on the Skillist app. The link is down below, so check that out and you can have a lesson with myself no matter where you are in the world. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a like and subscribe and I hope to see you back here soon.